right, guys, the topic for today is the distance formula. So we're talking all about finding the distance between two points. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to think about distance, but in reality, they're all pretty much the same. So in this first example, we're finding the distance between point A, which is at 4, 7. These points look like X comma y, so I'll go over 4 and up 7, and b is at negative 2, negative 3, so I'll go back 2 and down 3. I want to find the distance between these two points. Um, unfortunately, they're kind of at a diagonal, so I can't really count the squares they go through because they're kind of going through squares at a weird angle. Um, so I'm instead going to make a triangle with those points. And we're going to make sure it's a right triangle got a right angle in the corner because then we can use something called the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of that missing side. You already know the Pythagorean theorem. You learned it in eighth grade. The Pythagorean theorem says in any right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, A squared plus B squared will equal c squared. c is what we are trying to find here, our hypotenuse, a and b, and we don't have those, but they're pretty easy to find. Uh, if you're looking at this line along the bottom, a, that line goes from negative 2 over to 4, so the length of that line is going to be 6. Alternatively, you could have just counted those boxes. Um, and then we're looking at B. That line goes from negative 3 up to 7. So the length of that line should be 10. Same thing, you could have counted the boxes. So then we'll go back over to our equation and we'll plug in those values. A is 6. B is 10. C is what we're trying to find. 6 squared is 36. 10 squared is 100. So C squared will be 136. I didn't want C squared though. I just wanted C. So I'm going to take the square root of each side, the square root and the squared will cancel each other. So the square root of 136 is going to be our answer. Um, I don't really know what the square root of 136 looks like. So I'm just gonna throw that in a calculator and get a decimal approximation. Should be about 11 point six and we'll say that's units. So one way you can find the distance between two points is by drawing out a graph and using the Pythagorean theorem. If you don't want to draw out a graph, we also have a formula for distance. This is the distance formula. Um, it's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That is basically what we just did. These x2s, x1s, those come from our two points. So your first point is going to be x1 comma y1. And your second point is going to be x2 comma y2 
if you flip flop those points and have like B, B, or X1, Y1, and A, B, X2, Y2, doesn't matter. Whichever direction you're going, the distance between the two points is still going to be the same. So maybe let's plot these points just to see what it looks like so we can use it to check our work. Um, A is going to be over 10 and up 5. B is going to be over 2 and down 3. So we're trying to find that distance. We're just going to take these values and plug them in. So D, which stands for distance, will equal the square root of um, x2 is 2 x1 is 10, y2 is negative 3, don't forget that negative, y1 is 5, and then we'll just simplify this equation. Remember your order of operations, I'm going to do the thing in parentheses first. So my first parentheses has two minus 10. Um, 2 minus 10 is going to be negative 8. My other parentheses have negative 3 minus 5. You could also think of that as plus negative 5. Either way, it's going to be negative 8. So parentheses are taken care of. Then I'm going to do exponents. Um, negative 8 squared would be positive 64 because that means negative 8 times negative 8. So I've got 64 plus 64, which would be 128. Just like before, I'll throw that in my calculator and get a decimal approximation. Um, that one is about 11.31 units. And it's kind of tricky to see when we do it with the, the formula, but that is basically what we just did. Um, we made our triangle. We found the distance of one leg, so um, 2 minus 10 got us a negative 8. That negative doesn't really matter, though. The distance of one leg was 8. Same thing on the other side. Negative 3 minus 5 got us negative 8. The distance of that leg was 8. 8 squared plus 8 squared would be 64 plus 64, or 128, and then we took the square root of it. All right, again, we're going to do another distance problem. We're basically going to do the exact same thing, but I'm just going to frame it in a different way. So this is kind of like the first method and the second method, but put together, and this is the way that I do it in my brain. So here I want to find the length of the segment with the following endpoints, j at negative 2, 4, and k at 1, 3. I'm going to figure out the distance between my x's. So we'll say negative 2 is x1, and 1 is x2. The distance between negative 2 and 1 would be 3 units. I thought of that as a number line to go from negative 2 up to 0, it would be 2. And then I need one more, so it would be 3. And then I'm going to find the distance between my y's. So the distance between that's y2, distance between 4 and 3 is just going to be 1. And then I'm going to square those, add them together, and take the square root. So 3 squared 
is 9. 1 squared is 1. Square root of 10 is going to be our answer. As a decimal, that is about 3.16 units. So every method is doing about the same thing. There are just different ways that you can think about them. Personally, the way on this slide is how I do it, just because it is a little less steps. And we'll get some more practice with these in class tomorrow.